You are a financial therapist. Can you explain a little bit about what that is and your story of how you landed in such a unique, fulfilling career? Yeah, most people, when I say, oh, I'm a fi certified financial therapist, they look at me like the puppy dog look or the head tilts, and you're like, what? So I graduated with a degree in finance. I've always grown up liking math, and my dad and I bonded over math. So, you know, sitting at the kitchen table, yes, we had several fights over doing homework at night, but it was something that I enjoyed and that we talked about. And then as I got older, I started started trading stocks with my dad back in the day. One home computer, he would be sitting oh at it, right? And, and we'd just start talking. And so for him, it was a very natural dialogue for us. And as I got older and went into the real world, I realized that that wasn't the case for most people. So my life's a roller coaster, like yours and probably all your listeners as well. Never really met somebody in a straight path. That's flat mm -hmm. ever, right? So after I graduated, I went to work, go work for IBM. Amazing job consulting and loved it in North Carolina. And then I moved to New York City and with a boyfriend and an apartment that we probably did not or should not have afforded. Right. But that's a part of living in a city in New York, young, young and dumb Being in young, our 20s. Yeah, yeah. Got married and then we moved overseas. So we did two years in Tokyo and I had my, my daughter in Japan. My goal was to have a kid in every country. Didn't work out, but the first one was in Japan. Pretty cool. And then when she was four months old, we moved to Shanghai wow. and lived in Shanghai for a year. So by her first birthday, my oldest was in six countries. Wow. So for us, just traveling was second nature. I'll come back to my love of travel, how it started. But then from there, I bawled my eyes out when I realized that I needed to leave corporate America. I was married at the time, we had a baby, and I knew that the mother that I wanted to be also couldn't be the corporate warrior that I needed to be also. Mm -hmm. And I had just spent 30 years of my life building my career, knowing that I'm going to be kick-ass in the work field, and I had no idea how I'd be as a mom. I never had that nurturing instinct where, like, I wanted to be at home all the time. Like, that was never me. Mm -hmm. So I remember crying my eyes out. But I also recall that when I was in China, I found an organic baby food. Now, I lived in China. Finding organic baby food was crazy. So a woman cracked, a British mom, cracked open a pouch of organic baby food. Now, nowadays, you see it everywhere. The applesauce is the baby food. But back then, nobody had had it. So Paul Lindley, Ella's dad, created Ella's Kitchen, which was the first pouch baby food. Wow. And so I started importing it from Hong Kong. Then like my friends in the UK would ship it to the US. And I remember calling them and saying, hey, when are you coming to the US? Like there's such a market here. And they said, oh, we're actually coming. The CEO is going to be in the Lower East Side next week. And I met him at Dunkin' Donuts for a cup of coffee and they hired me on the spot. Oh my god! Because I was just transitioning from corporate America. I was pregnant with my next baby. And all of a sudden, now I'm growing brands in the organic food space. Okay. You just roll with Pivots. that life. Pivot, baby. <laughs> right? Opportunity knocked and, you know, you took yeah. advantage of it. So I spent the next five years growing organic baby food. And in that time frame, I ended up having a couple more kids. So I ended up with three kids under the age of four wow. and got divorced. Mm. And I moved to Florida and had to readjust my life again. So the roller coaster of life, right? Moments moving to Asia. Woo, right? Excitement. Mm -hmm. And then a twist, we moved to China. Oh, no. You know, and then another twist, we moved back to the U.S. And then, like, you know, the roller coaster of, of young babies, three of them. We go up and down and up and down. Mm -hmm. And now I got divorced. Whoosh, massive dip. Luckily, we did it amicably. And I was always in control of our finances. Right. So what I realized as I've gone through life is most people on this roller coaster of life aren't in control of their finances or have a strong relationship with money. When you have a strong relationship with money, there's opportunities mm -hmm. and you have options. When you don't, often you feel defeated and helpless. And I don't want people to feel that way. So fast forward a few years, my father passes away in 2017. He's my financial accountability partner my entire life. He's the person that's like, when I got my first job and I called my dad up, I'm like, I'm buying a new car. He's like, no, you're not. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> also, when I went to Australia for a month after college, you know, yeah. and I was like, oh, I'm going to take a gap year. He's like, no, 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 you're not. Yeah. Like, you have a job, you have an apartment, like, you're going to work. I lost that person. Mm. And so did my mom after 50 years of marriage. And she knew where the binder was, but she didn't know what everything else was and what the meanings were. And her relationship with money wasn't as strong because it wasn't her role. Mm -hmm. Shortly after, I discovered financial therapy is a real thing. And I was like, what do you mean? I can help people with their relationship with money, a topic that I'm 
enjoy talking about. I'm never going to be great at running. I'm never going to be great at a lot of things, right? Drawing, anything. Those aren't my talents, but talking about money is one of them. So I went to Kansas State and got a graduate certificate in financial therapy. There are several schools in the country right now that have a graduate certificate in financial therapy. Half mm. the people have finance backgrounds, half are licensed mental health backgrounds. Right, okay. Then I found there's a financial therapy association. Been around about 10 years now. And I became one of 70 certified in the field. I was actually, I think, number 15 to be certified. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're really like a pioneer in the space. S- such a pioneer in the yeah. space. And I love it because it kind of reminds me back to living in China, like yeah. total wild, wild west, totally. right? I get to create what I want this brand to be. So mm. your financial therapist is corporate wellness. I work with companies all over the world, which I love because money is like music. Every country, every culture has it. Mm-hmm. Just a different rhythm. Yeah. And and then I work with individuals and couples and and I created the deck of cards that we'll talk about because I want to make it approachable for everybody to talk about money. We're raised not to talk about it. In fact, 81% of people out of a survey of 2000, 81% said they were taught not to talk about money but didn't know why. Totally. So how can you get better at something? The, the not being able to talk about money I think is really important. I, I even find now even with my best, best, best girlfriends, we'll be talking about something and I'm like, oh, you know, it'll cost X, Y, Z amount. Like I won't say how much the car costs or how much this because it's like it's a taboo to like talk about what you're spending on and how much you're spending on and and you're here to change that conversation. I am. 